Hello my divers and welcome back to another episode of Diving Deep with me, Des. Um, I've been MIA because honestly, I'm just a tired girl, man. No matter what time I go to sleep, I'm just fucking tired. So I didn't film last week or upload last week and sorry, but I'm just fucking tired and that's just what it is. I don't feel a commitment to post. I just post when I want and say what I want or when I want. So with that being said, today I'm just going to be catching you guys up, talking about some books I've been reading, talking about some feelings I've been feeling, and you know, the whole shebang. So whenever you're ready, go ahead and grab a snack or maybe two, sit back, and let's get ready to dive. Okay, so first things first, um, yeah, I've just been tired, like so tired. It doesn't matter what time I go to sleep. I can go to sleep at 8 p.m. I can go to sleep at 12 a.m. It doesn't make a difference. I'm just fucking exhausted, and I don't know why, because nothing's really changed in my day-to-day -day life. Um, but yeah, I've just been really fucking tired. Um, what else has been going on? Oh, um, over the weekend on Saturday... I went to a farmer's market with Jenna and Gio. We went to the Lincoln Park Farmer's Market. And we thought it was going to be a lot bigger than what it was. It was still cute. There were still, like, you know, some booths and stuff. But it wasn't nearly as big as we thought it was going to be. It was actually, like, pretty small. It was in a parking lot in Lincoln Park. It's right across from this, like, pottery painting place that Michelle and I have been to. Um, I don't really recommend going to that place. Only because whenever we go, the customer service is, like, so, like, the staff looks at us like they're bothered by us being there. And, like, um, when we went, we were like, hey, like, this is our first time. Like, we don't really know what's going on. And, like, no one really, like, helped us do anything like we kind of had to just figure it out on our own and like the only time the staff really talked to us was to tell me that I couldn't move my chair to sit next to Michelle I had to sit across from her the way that the chairs were set up so I was like okay and yeah the staff just wasn't really helpful there so I don't recommend that place um I can't even remember what it's called because it's just not that it's just not important but yeah, so we went to the Lincoln Park flea market, or farmer's market, and it was cute, but there wasn't really much. I got some hot sauces for my parents from some vendors that, like, they sold, like, canned fruits, or not canned, like, jarred fruits. They sold hot sauces, they sold fruits, vegetables, like, stuff like that, and jams, I think, and I'm pretty sure they, like, make it themselves. It was, like, two older hispanic men um we haven't tried the hot sauces yet because i'm not a big sauce condiment person that's just really not for me um but my parents just from like looking at it were like oh this might be really really good so we'll find out um they also had oh there was this couple i'm assuming that um made sugar scrubs and they were so so nice jenna bought some of those I wanted to buy one, but they were out of the scent that I liked, and I'm very peculiar about what scents I like when it comes to, like, body scrubs and lotions and stuff, um, but they were really, really nice and very moisturizing, um, so I definitely want to check them out. I know she said, I think that they go to, like, Logan Square Market, I think she said. Um, I could be wrong. But I could always catch them at the Lincoln Park one. Um, and yeah, there wasn't really much there. So after the farmer's market, we went and met up with Rich and Michelle. Rich is Michelle's younger brother. Um, they were at UIC for, um, for an event because Rich just committed to go to UIC. So he's going to be continuing his education there. And so they have like a get to know the program type of event thing um so geo jenna and i we met up with them to grab lunch and on our way to meet up with them we passed the clark street farmers market 
which we realized was most likely the one we intended to go to originally because it was ginormous. It was all over like the field, so many boots. It looked so much fun. But by the time we like drove past it, it was already 1230 and they closed at like one. So by the time we found parking and all that, it just wouldn't have worked. Um, so yeah, we met up. We ended up getting lunch at I think that the place was like Paco's Tacos or some shit. I don't know. It was on a rooftop. It wasn't really that big. Um, but it was pretty good. The I got like a frozen marg. Except it didn't really taste like alcohol like at all. It tasted like just straight juice, which like fine I guess. But like if I'm getting a frozen marg, I want it to get me drunk as fuck, you know? And so, yeah, and then I, we got, um, ceviche to share, and it was actually really fire, and I just got asada tacos, because whenever I'm trying a new Mexican place, that's usually just my go-to, like, my safe option. Um, the asada was good, the tortillas, though, were, like, it was, like, they warmed them up, and then they were, like, kind of just sitting there. And then they, like, rewarm them. I don't know. The tortillas weren't... Mm, they were, like, basic corn tortillas, but, like, they weren't fresh and, like, soft the way they probably should have been. Um, but other than that, the food was pretty good, I guess. You could tell it's definitely, like, a... Like, um... Kind of, like, a whitewashed Mexican place. I feel like they're... Like, I don't really know what they would be known for because, like, the food was, like, it was good, but I probably wouldn't go back there again. And, um, the drinks were good, but, like, again, they didn't really taste, like, I mean, maybe it could be because we got frozen drinks. Because, like, Michelle got a Paloma and that bitch was strong as fuck in taste. Um, but, yeah, I don't know. I wouldn't really go back there again. It wasn't really that big. And they, like, didn't serve. I knew it wasn't going to be, like, the best of the best because there was no chips and salsa given to us when we sat down. Like, you had to pay for chips and salsa as, like, an appetizer. So that's how I knew, like, y'all are not a real Mexican place because this is some booty shit. Uh, but, yeah, after that, we went to, um, we went to a library. We went to that big one. I don't know what it's called. It's like the Herald Library or something. I don't know. Fuck. I don't know what it's called. I don't know what it's called. But we were like, du we were by DuPaul or DuPage. Um, fuck. I don't know, guys. I'm not Christopher Columbus. I can't remember what the fuck it was called. But it's really fucking big. There's like 10 floors in it for no reason. Neither of us have had ever been there. So we, like, go in, and we're, like, in the elevator, and then there's a guy in the elevator, and he's, like, oh, what floor do you guys want to go to? And we were, like, oh, um, like, the library, and he's, like, this whole building is the library, like, what floor do you want to go to? And we were, like, oh, like, um, I don't fucking know, I don't know, so we just low-key followed him to one floor anyway. And it was so funny because, like, the whole time that we were down in the city, we were like, oh, we're such city girls. Like, it's city girl. And then we get to, like, the most known library in the city and we're, like, don't have a clue how the fuck it works. Um, But it was really cool. They have, like, I'm telling you, there's, like, eight floors. Um, no, there's, like, nine floors that are open to the public. And they have, like, the winter garden floor, which is so beautiful. Like, oh, my gosh. It felt like a movie. We were saying, like, a wedding needs to happen there or something because it was just so gorgeous. Um, there were a bunch of, bunch of floors of just books. And so every floor was, like, a different, was for different genre of books. Like, there's a music floor. There's, like, a history floor, like, shit like that. The music floor was really, really dope. It was, like, a music and art floor. And they had, like, models of buildings all over. And they have, like, soundproof rooms. So we were seeing people that were, like, there's a guy, like, playing the piano. There was a girl, like, singing. It was really cool. Um, and, yeah, we stayed just sitting. And we, like, looked at some books. We looked at a Keith Haring book because Keith Haring is one of Michelle and I's favorite artists. 
Um, so we were just looking through like this big thick ass book they had of all of his artworks and just stuff about him. And like while we were sitting there, like we were all like, fuck, like we haven't been to a library in a long time. Or at least like sat down at a library and actually looked through things, you know. But it was really cool just being in that environment. It was so like quiet, so peaceful. Um, and you're just surrounded by so many pieces of art and music and like artifacts. And it was just really cool, man. And we were all just saying like, wow, like, th like sitting in the library made us be like, wow, we should go back to school and like we could study at this library or like at any other library. Um, and then, yeah, and then we just like were talking and like talking about how like everyone in our class, not everyone, but like a lot of people from our class and like that are our age are like graduating and it's like cool for them. Like, I'm so glad that they found their path in life if they went to school for four years and committed to it and that's their path and they're graduating and that's super super cool but there's like a little bitter sweetness to it because it's like fuck like we all dropped out and yeah school is not for everyone but you can't help but feel a little like behind in a way because you're seeing people graduate and you're seeing people either carry on their schooling or start their careers or whatever the case is. And at least me anyway, I feel like a little like shit like that should be me. That could have been me. But I dropped out and I didn't keep going to school. And I don't know. I just feel like part of me is like, it's okay. Like that wasn't your path. And I know that. But another part of me is like, well, shit, like, the four years passed anyways, you might as well should have just stayed in school and had them pass like that. But I don't know, I'm very conflicted with school and just going back to school because a part of me is like, yes, I want to make money. I would like to find a career that would make me money. But at the same time, school is not for everyone. And I think school is not for me. I think a lot of it has to do with like being a over excelling student growing up like in middle school and elementary school I was always like in every club I was in every like honors class every AP class whatever the fuck and then I don't know I just lost my momentum I think a lot of it also has to do with me losing focus of myself and what I really wanted out of life I think I got too caught up in being cool and popular and having fun and getting drunk as a minor to focus on school and setting myself up for that next chapter of my life I think also the pandemic what the pandemic really showed me that I don't know I guess I just don't have the attention span anymore for school but it's not I, I don't know like I do but I don't it's very my attention span depends on if I'm interested in what's being like said or presented to me um same with like books so like lately I've been starting to read more books because I I just want to like reduce my screen time like I've, I already have been pretty good about reducing it but I think reading has like definitely helped me reduce it a lot more reading also kind of like attaches me to my inner child more because growing up I constantly read like I I was the kid that like hid my DS under my pillow when it was bedtime but right next to my DS there would be a book and I would, like, stay up at night just reading. Like, my grandma got me an, an attachment light that I could, like, attach to the book so I could read in the dark. So, like, lately I've been just fueling that again with books. And it was really hard. Like, I've been wanting to read a little bit. And, like, my mom worked at a library for two years. So, 
for those two years, she was constantly trying, like, she had me get a library card, but I was like, girl, like, I don't read, when I what, why, like, what's the point of this, I'm never gonna use it, and for the two years that she worked there, she was always like, come on, like, just check out a book, like, or she would check me out some books that she thought I would like, and I just never, like, could get myself to sit down and, like, give a fuck about reading, but now that I have so much, like, downtime in a way I've decided to take up on reading again and I've found that I am drawn I've always been drawn to like love stories I do love love even though like love in real life like cringes me out but like in books I'm like oh like that can be me <laughs> so I've been reading these books and I've been going to the library and checking books out. I actually just requested two more. Um, but actually, we'll get into that a little later because I'm not even done with the weekend. So, so yeah, we went to the farmer's market. We went to get lunch. We went to the library. We went to a house party. It was really fun. We got lit. We were playing King's Cup. It was a good time. And then the next day was Sunday. We went to the... Wolf's Flea Market at the Allstate Arena. And I forgot how, like, big that shit is. Because I didn't go... I haven't really gone much ever. And I know Michelle and I went, I think, like, once last summer, maybe. But aside from that, we don't really go. But um, Michelle's cousin, Blue, like, loves the flea market. He, like, has been hyping us up all spring to go... And it was actually supposed to open up last Sunday, but it was raining all day, so they postponed it to this Sunday. But it was so, like, we found so many good finds, so many good deals. Um, and I also invited my brother and his girlfriend to come, and they brought the baby. And it was just a chill time. Like, it was such nice weather. Um, and it was just a good time. We got churros. They were pretty fire. Um... There's this guy that he does caricature drawings, but he does them, like, cutely. Like, he doesn't, you know, like, some people, like, if you have a slightly above average size nose, they'll, like, extend that shit like Pinocchio. Or if you have, like, a five head instead of a four head, they make that shit look like a ten head. Like, this guy was actually really nice, and he drew them really cutely. So, Michelle and I went to him. And he they he does them for free actually and like obviously you can tip him and stuff. But yeah, Michelle and I waited in line and we got our picture done. So this is us. So cute. And when we sat down, he was like, Oh, like, are you guys best friends? And I kind of went like a mannequin challenge mode because I don't know why it's like so not embarrassing. But it's, like, being queer and having people, like, when you're with your partner, be like, oh, you guys are, like, friends. Like, are you guys friends? It's, like, I, like yes, we're friends, but we're, like, obviously more than friends. I don't know. It feels kind of, like, backhanded in a way. Like, sir, I know you know by looking at us that we're not just friends. You know what I mean? But it's also, like... And I'm, I'm a very confrontational person, too. But when it comes to things like that, I kind of, like, shut down. Because I guess I don't... Because to me, it's like, I go my everyday life. Like, I'm queer. I don't care. I'm with my partner all the time. Like, I don't care. But when someone, like, confronts us about it, I'm kind of, like, taken aback. Because then I realize, like, oh, I guess we're not as societally normal as I like to think if that makes sense like not to say that being queer is not normal but it's like to older people because this guy was really fucking old too so it's like but to older people they still like have the and they were roommates mentality even though like I don't know I think if by looking at Michelle and I you can just tell like we don't scream friends we definitely give we're together so, I don't know, it kind of just threw me off. And then I feel like also he drew Michelle to look a lot fem a lot more feminine um, looking than Michelle presents themselves. So, that was kind of like the... So, those are like the things that like kind of rubbed us the wrong way. 
And then he was like, oh, I don't know that much Spanish, but I'll write the Spanish I do know. And he wrote, las dos muy bonitas señoritas. And it's like, yes, I'm brown, but like, what if I didn't even speak Spanish? And you're just assuming I'm speaking Spanish. You know what I mean? I don't know. So like, the picture was cute. I really like it. I want to frame it. But like, the overall interaction was kind of like, eh. And I was also kind of smacked. So I don't know. I was just like, oh, <laughs> thanks. Like, thanks. I don't know. Um, but yeah, and then after that, we just like chilled. Oh, we also copped a bunch, not a bunch, we copped a few things. Um, we found a Pentax camera brand new with the bag, with the chargers and everything for $15. So I got that because I collect cameras. Um, I have a few different cameras actually. So added that to our collection. I think we're also going to bring that to Puerto Rico when we go with us because I want to like I want to make a little, like, vacation picture book thing. I've been seeing them a lot on TikTok lately. And Michelle and I made one, like, a year ago, a year and a half ago, I think, when we first started dating because we had, like, a T-Mobile Tuesday coupon. So we made, like, a picture coffee table book of, um like, the, our first summer dating. Um, So we've been wanting to do that with like more vacations but we haven't really gone on any vacations long enough for us to have pictures to fill a book like we went to california last september and but that was just like a weekend and we've been to michigan and like little weekend trips here and there but when we go to puerto rico we'll be there michelle will be there for a week and i'll be there for two weeks so we'll actually have a lot more content to be able to make ourselves little like Puerto Rico coffee books and shit and like that'll be really cute um so yeah we got that camera and then um we found there was like this vintage booth next to like a 70s vintage booth and he had so much Harley Davidson like basically the whole rack was just Harley which was really fucking dope Michelle got this like thick thermal it was Harley um the um, designs are really cool. I posted a TikTok of, like, our little haul, so if you guys want to check out and see what I'm actually talking about, I'll put my TikTok at right here, and you can go look at that. Um, so yeah, Michelle got, like, a thick Harley thermal. Um, we found, well, I found, a like, a little gray, creamish, um, suede jacket. I just really like the style and wear of those type of jackets, so I got that one. And we also found, not even we, I found a Harley Davidson, really, really cool, like, you know, like the Carhartt jacket? It was like that, but it was like a Harley Davidson, and it was like a dark, like, worn black and gray vibe, like, and I don't know, like, the simplicity of it was just cool. And it says, like, Harley, and then on the back it just says Harley Davidson in black letters, and it's just really fucking cool. And Michelle and I were, like, bickering over it all weekend, like, trying to see who would claim it, or not claim it, because, like, Michelle and I share our clothes, like, it's not a problem, we're the same size, but it was more, like, whose house would it reside at. We worded it as, like, who would have sole custody of the jacket, and I eventually gave in and let Michelle... Michelle have sole custody of the jacket because realistically I don't even wear jackets like that like for the most part I'd probably just want to take an Instagram picture or like do a fit check on TikTok with it so it's like okay fine like you can let it reside at your house like whatever um and then yeah after that we just chilled at the house I don't think we really did much I think we like oh we had a picnic we had a picnic with Blue and Alley. We got some Sam's Club pizza and we went to um some lake. I forgot what they called the lake. But yeah, we had a picnic. We played some Scrabble, had some fruits. We ate like a lot of fruits and like cheeses and pizzas and it was really, really good though. And then we just went home and we um chilled for a little bit. I had Allie cut my hair, like just the ends, because my ends were so fucking rough. Um and then, yeah, we just slept. It was a chill day. I called off work on Monday just because my tummy was 
hurting after eating all the fucking bullshit we were eating over the weekend. Um, so I called off work because I was like, y'all, I'm kind of struggling not like TMI, but like, sorry, I was really struggling. So I called off of work. And now it's Wednesday and I'm back at work and work's been like chill. We're going to be going into summer hours soon. So I want to get a part time because I don't like living check to check like that stresses me out. So I would I want to get a part time um, just so that I'm more comfortable with myself and I'm still able to live the life I like to provide myself. And so I can experience the things I like to experience without having to stress over money. Um, Speaking of stress, over the weekend, they found the nastiest, longest, coarsest piece of gray hair in my head. And I, like, had a panic attack a little bit because, like, what the fuck? We were on our way to Aldi's to get some cookies and... Um, Allie, like, looked at my hair, or the back of my head, and there's, there was just a gray hair, and it was so disgusting, and so we went home, and we cut it out, and it literally felt like floss, like, I was like, I'll give you guys ten bucks to floss with this shit, um, but it just, it was so just, it felt like floss, and it was not cute, and then I googled it, and it said that gray hairs are caused by stress, or lack of nutrients, and vitamins, or thyroid and I was like well what the fuck is a thyroid and then Allie said it's something with your throat and I'm like kind of a hypochondriac so ever since I've like heard that or ever since she told me that I've like every day like touching my throat like what the fuck is a thyroid like do I have a thyroid but I like refuse to allow myself to google it because I know if there's even like one symptom out of like the hundreds that I can relate to I'm gonna like think I have thyroid and like fucking panic all the time like I'm the type of person like I if I'm sick I just can't even acknowledge the fact that I'm sick or like I can't even have myself google any symptoms or anything because if google tells me I have four hours to live like I'm gonna believe it I'm gonna start writing a will I'm gonna have a panic attack and like it's not gonna be cute so I just don't even allow myself to acknowledge whenever I am sick because I'm a very very bad hypochondriac it's not even funny um, but yeah, other than that, <laughs> other than that, um, my weekend was fine. Oh, but also those fucking goddamn, all these cookies, I think cursed me because not only did I find the gray hair, I burned the fuck out of my arm. Look at this shit. Ew. And it's my first time ever being burnt like that. And I, ew, like, ew. It looks like a skid mark on my arm. Ew, I also can't look at it because I'll fucking get lightheaded and pass out. But um, we put aloe on it and then my arm got started getting like super, super red. And we couldn't tell like if it was because I just burned myself or because I was allergic to aloe. Like Michelle was fully convinced I was allergic to aloe for the first 30 minutes, which then was convincing me that I was allergic to aloe for the first 30 minutes. And I was like, but I've never been allergic to aloe. Like, did I just randomly develop an allergy to aloe? Like, of course, this would be the time I'm allergic to aloe. Turns out I'm not allergic to aloe. I'm just a hypochondriac. And Michelle also kind of riled me up because I was getting convinced, like, holy fuck, maybe I am allergic to aloe. But I'm not. I'm not. Everything's okay. I'm okay. Taking it day by day. Um, but yeah. Um, what was I saying earlier? Oh yeah, the libraries and reading. Guys, go back to li let's let's bring back libraries. Go ahead, get your library card. Get some books out, get some movies out, whatever the fuck you want to have at your library, get it. Go get it. Because libraries actually support authors a lot more than we realize. Um, like, if you request a book that the library doesn't have, then they buy it. And that helps support the artist. Or the author, I mean. And if multiple people are requesting a book, then they have to buy more copies. And then that also supports the author. And then if I read a good book, like one of the ones I'm going to talk about is one of my new favorite books. If I read a new book, a good book, that makes me want to then indulge into the author and their previous work and their future work. And now the author has a fan of me. And now I'm going to continue to read their books and talk about their books and get their names 
and pieces of art out there. So I'm pro libraries. Sorry, mom, that it took me this long and that I couldn't give you the support when you work there. But me right now, pro libraries, let's get back to reading because fuck a phone, fuck social media. Let's get back to reading. So with that being said, I'm going to talk about a few books that I've been reading or that I've read. Guys, I'm so hyper today. Oh, my God. I'll fix that later. Okay, so first book I read. This one I bought. I bought on World of Books for $15. World of Books sells used books, but they're pretty good. Like, they're not dirty. They're not, like, ripped or anything. They're just someone owned it, finished reading it, sold it back to them. Now they sold it to me. So this first book is called Big Swiss, and it's by Jen Began. And, oh, guys, this book, I actually really, really liked it. Okay, so I'm just going to read you the back, of the, the back of the book cover, and then I'll, like, get into it more. So the main characters, Big Swiss, her real name is Flavia. She's 28. She's a dog lover. She's married, she's a gynecologist, she's never had an orgasm, and she's currently in sex therapy. Greta, who is the real main character of the book, Greta, a.k.a. Rebecca, she's 45, she's also a dog, dog lover, she's newly single, she's an audio transcriptionist for a sex therapist, she's bound by a confidentiality agreement, increasingly infatuated with one particular client. Okay, so Big Swiss. The main character is Greta. Greta is a transcriber for a sex therapist because the sex therapist is writing a book. So he hired Greta to transcribe his sessions with his clients. Greta doesn't know what the book is about or when it's going to be released or anything. All she knows is that Ohm, who's the name of the sex therapist, Ohm records the client's meetings with their consent and she types them out transcribes them and sends him the files and that's that so ohm the sex therapist gets a new client and her initials are f something i can't remember her first name is flavia her initials are f e w r that's Big Swiss, a.k.a. Flavia's initials, F-E-W. So, Ohm starts seeing F-E-W, and throughout Greta transcribing her sessions with him, Greta starts to, like, you know, take interest in her, starts fantasizing about her, starts masturbating about her, but she's never seen her. So, everything that she's, like, concocting in her mind is based off of listening to Flavia's voice and all the ideas and concepts that she's creating in her mind and so yeah she starts liking her in a way through just listening to her voice and her sessions with ohm so flavia's seeing ohm because she's never had an she's never had an orgasm and she also had like a really really bad attack on her and so yeah that's why she's seeing ohm um, one day Greta's at a dog park and her dog, who is this little white dog on the cover, her dog gets attacked by another dog and Flavia is at this dog park and saves Greta's dog. And once Flavia starts talking, Greta realizes like, oh, you're F.E.W. Like you're the woman I've been obsessed with. And Greta doesn't make it known that that's how she knows Flavia because she, she can't. She's, she has this confidentiality agreement. So she can't even like tell Flavia who she works for or what she does or anything. So they end up talking. They end up becoming friends. But Greta tells Flavia that her name is Rachel. And that she does something else for work than what she actually does. And so Flavia and Rachel end up seeing each other at the dog park like they would go together weekly and then the dog park turns into going to the bars and the bars turn into sleeping each other sleeping with each other so then Rachel aka Greta and Flavia end up having this affair 
and Greta ends up really liking her, but at the same time, like, kind of resenting her because Flavia's married, and Flavia's also, like, the no bullshit, like, my trauma is not my excuse, like, doesn't like when people use their trauma as an excuse, or, like, doesn't sympathize, she doesn't empathize, she doesn't baby people, so she really forces Greta to face her traumas, and Greta's trauma is that her mother offed herself when Greta was really young, and again, Greta is now 45, and she still uses her mother's passing as, like, almost an excuse to act the way that she acts, and Flavia's like, no, bitch, like, you're 45, like, grow the fuck up, move past it, um, and Flavia's also kind of that way with herself, with her, like, trauma and the attack that she endured, like, she's also very much, like, it's not me, like, I don't care, I'm past it, even though she's, like, very much not, um, but yeah, so they start seeing each other, they start sleeping with each other, and then it just escalates, and then, you know, like, Flavia is married, so then she invites Greta to dinner with the both of them, except he doesn't know that they're seeing each other, and then he's, like, confessing like how they're going on a trip and he wants to have babies and they've been trying to have babies and it's this whole thing and then eventually everything kind of just blows up and Greta gets caught up in all of her lies but Flavia like loves her but also hates her and Flavia actually finds out and like puts the pieces together during a session with Ohm so Greta is finding out like in kind of in real time but not really real time Because, like, she's, like, listening to the session to transcribe it. And while she's transcribing it, she's, like, having to write Flavia, putting everything together and, like, telling her off through the recording. So, it kind of blows up in her face. And then Flavia, like, they see each other, I think, like, once. But then, like, something really scary happens. So, then they don't see each other anymore. And then they never see each other again. And then Ohm has to fire Greta because she you know, lied and, like, broke the confidentiality agreement, and then he feels bad for her, so then he kind of helps her in return by doing some therapies and, like, making her do some exercises, and it's, like, a whole thing, but that's just my synopsis of it. I really, really liked it. I think the, the tech size is actually really good, and the breakdown of, like, the chapters and the characters and just every, the way that everything is written is really good to me um it is very not very but there is some like what is the word like not kink what is the word there's um fuck oh my god guys why whenever i'm filming i like forget the words i'm trying to say basically what i'm trying to say is that this book has some explicit content there are some paragraphs and scenes where they're getting a little saucy a little freaky so you know I wouldn't recommend this to anyone younger than like 18 personally but this is really 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 good I think it's one of my favorite books I would rate it like a 9 out of 5 only because there are some grammatical and like spelling errors I kind of encountered while reading this book But yeah, Big Swiss, 9.5 out of 10, I would rate it. So if you like trauma, if you like love affairs, if you like love triangles, this is the book for you, man. Another book I read. Um, This one I checked out. I didn't buy, and I'm actually kind of glad I didn't buy just because this one didn't excite or entice me as much as Big Swiss did. So, this book is called Milk Fed, and it's by Melissa Broder. And the character in the the main character in this book, her name is actually Rachel. And Rachel is anorexic, and it's kind of something she's always been because her mother was also anorexic and just kind of forced it upon Rachel. And Rachel's in therapy, except she hates her therapist. And then her therapist makes her go, not makes her, but really encourages her to go 
90 days of no contact with her mom. So she eventually does. And Rachel, being anorexic, she has a very strict calorie um, and meal regimen that she sticks to on the daily. And part of that regimen is that she allows herself to go to the frozen yogurt place next to her job and she gets like a calorie free dairy free sugar free like all this fucking free whatever frozen yogurt and she's used to one of two workers being there because she goes every single day so she like knows the worker she knows how it works whatever one day she goes and it's a girl working and she's like kind of thrown off and then so she sees this girl, and the girl, her name is Miriam. So Miriam is, you know, she's plumper. She's got rolls. She's got huge bazonkers. You know, she's everything that Rachel, in her words, is essentially afraid of. Because, you know, Rachel's anorexic, so she's skin and bones. And then she sees Miriam, who's like, plump and she's comfortable with eating and she takes joy and pride in eating and you know it's like it throws her off in a way but she's also like intrigued and attracted to it she's like wow like Miriam is everything I don't want to be but I kind of do want to be you know so Miriam like pushes her to you know try new flavors, try new toppings. Cause her frozen yogurt, I forget what her order was, but she like wouldn't get toppings. It would just be the yogurt, and it would only be like a certain amount of ounces. And Miriam like never listened to her, and she would always give her more ounces than she asked for, and she would always give her more toppings than she asked for, and like all this stuff. So then eventually they start getting to know each other. They start talking. They start smoking like in the alley just because Rachel goes here every day and Rachel is Jewish but she's very loosely Jewish um meanwhile Miriam's family is very orthodox too like they um they are the ones that own the frozen yogurt place so like one of the guys that Rachel would always see working is actually Miriam's brother except Miriam's brother recently had just left to the Israeli army because now he's fighting with Israel against Palestine. So this book I kind of like because it does address the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. Um, but it's also insane because this book was written in 2021 or at least published in 2021 and it's now 2024 and like the Israeli-Palestinian conflict is still an everyday topic of conversation so it's like holy fuck you know what I mean um but yeah so then they start like hanging out they're friends they go to movies and Rachel meets Miriam's family but as just a friend um she goes to Sabbath which is like um Jewish day of rest it's like their weekly Jewish day of rest where on Saturdays, once the sun sets, you're not supposed to do anything work-related or anything that can be considered work. So Rachel goes, and it's amazing. She's so embraced by the family and by Miriam's mom, which she's not used to because, you know, her and her mom never really had the best relationship. Um, so she starts developing feelings for Miriam, and she starts testing the waters by asking her some stuff. And then they end up sleeping together. And while they're, she calls it the seven nights of Miriam. They were together every night for like seven nights in a row. Um, and so while she's interested in Miriam, this, one of her clients at work. So Rachel works at a like talent management agency. And they have this client, his name is Jace Evans, I believe. He's, like, their celebrity. Um, he's, like, kind of showing interest in Rachel and, like, inviting her out to eat and, like, all this little things. And then um, Rachel also has this coworker named Anna who is older. She's, like, in her 40s, I believe. And Rachel's, like, Rachel's attracted to Anna in, like, a motherly way but also in a sexual way. Like, she doesn't really... She battles between, like, I want you to love me as a mother, but I also want you to love me as, like, let's have sex, you know? Um, 
So while she's seeing Miriam, there's also Jace on the side, but she's not really paying any attention to him because she really is into Miriam. And then Miriam really forces Rachel to face her fears of food and, like, not makes her, but, like, helps her embrace that, like, food is good. Like, food isn't bad. You don't have to be scared of food. And then, so while she, like, starts seeing Miriam and she's eating more, Anna's starting to, like, be kind of sly with her because she notices that Anna, that Rachel's gaining weight. And Anna, another thing that connected Anna and Rachel was that they were both anorexic as fuck. Like, Anna never says she's anorexic, but the way that Rachel describes her and, like, sees her, it's very evident that they're both going through the same thing, and that's why they kind of, like, bond together. Um, and then also as Rachel starts seeing Miriam, she kind of gets more masculine presenting, like Miriam buys her a suit. And then, um, so she just, she, uh, she also like takes on this role during sex that like she's the masculine one. She's like the, the quote unquote man of the experience. Um, and then things kind of turn sour, like very quickly. I feel like this book, the build-up takes so, so long, and then the climax hits and everything is just kind of rushed, which I didn't really like. Um, so then, yeah, so then Miriam sees her, like, one more time, and then she is like, okay, I'll come back once the sun sets, never comes back, never hears from her. So then Rachel ends up sleeping with Jace, and then she tells Anna not in, like, haha, I slept with Jace, but, like, oh, like, I slept with Jace, like, he came after me, and, like, he wanted me, and this is, like, after she starts presenting more masculinely, so she, like, cut her hair off, she's wearing suits, and, like, I don't know, just very masculine presenting, so then Anna's, like, oh, well, what if he's just gay and, like, using you as, like, a beer, like, Anna's very, like, condescending, like, very dismissive about it, and then Anna narks on them, and then Rachel gets fired, and then, I don't know, again, like, the ending was very sped through, like, there's not really much being said towards the end about anything, really, and then there's, like, a random three-year time jump where Rachel sees Miriam on the street, except they act like they don't know each other, and Miriam's pushing twins in a stroller that look like her, meaning Miriam never came out to her family, and just, like, settled for a man and like lived that life and yeah this book was like it was good but it wasn't great I definitely liked Big Swiss a lot more I think this book was more to me it was kind of like a knockoff of Big Swiss in a way um the formatting of this book also kind of pissed me off because this book has 78 chapters 79 79 chapters except every chapter is like two to four pages long so I'm like girl like we could have put some of these chapters together there shouldn't be 79 chapters a lot of the passages and not a lot but some a good amount of passages in this book kind of felt like word requirements or like page requirement it's like in college when you're writing an essay and they're like this has to be 12 pages with this many words it kind of felt like that was the outline of this book was like it has to have more than 50 chapters or it has to have like more than this many paragraphs per like I don't know you know what I mean so the book was good it wasn't great there's also like some sexualness and, like, sexual scenes in this book, but some of them kind of, like, were, like, what? Like, what the fuck are you even talking about? Um, yeah, I don't know. I wasn't that big of a fan of this book the way I was with Big Swiss, but, I mean, if that seems like something you're interested in, go ahead, talk about it, read about it. The current book that I'm reading, I'm actually, like, three- fourth I'm like two-thirds of the way done with it it's called I'm a fan by Sheena Patel and this one I uh, I have like mixed feelings about it I don't think I would it's it's been really really hard 
for me to finish this. I'm not going to lie. Like Big Swiss was a book like I, I couldn't put it down. I didn't want to put it down. Milk Fed, I would like read a bunch, but then I would like, I would have a break and then like pick it up again and then have a break. This one, it's like after every chapter, they're not even chapters. That's a thing. But after every like four pages, I'm like putting it down and like looking and like being on my phone. Which defeats the purpose of me, like, trying to read again. So, this book is about this girl who I can't even remember her name because it really... That's the thing, too, in this book. They don't really say names of anyone. She refers to... Okay, so it's this girl, the main character, right? She has a boyfriend, a long-term boyfriend. She's 31 years old. But she's in love with, like, this man of status. And she refers to this man as the man I want to be with. This man of status is married for 26 years, except he's got like five other side bitches and she's just another side bitch to him. So the the man I want to be with, as she calls him, is actually married, but also in love with another girl who the main character refers to as the woman I want to be. So it's the man I want to be with and the woman I want to be. She cyber stalks the woman she wants to be. Like, it's repulsive and embarrassing the way she cyber stalks. Like, at first, like, reading the book, I was like, oh, she's probably, like, she's got to be, like, early 20s or something. No, this bitch is fully 31 years old cyber stalking this girl. And when I mean cyber stalking, I mean, like, she sits there on her phone on her laptop like refreshing her page by the minute to see what she's posting what she's doing the main character to me is very unlikable which i think also makes it really hard to fucking read this and there's also like in the beginning there's like time jumps but then there's not anymore and then she's like talking about there's a lot of random characters and like passages and like thoughts that she has that don't really make sense in the context like they're not just they're just not really needed and also like there's no like chapters or anything every page will have like every page has like a a title in a way and then it's like the it's kind of written like what the fuck is that poetry book um like, that Milk and Honey book, it's kind of written like that. That's what it feels like I'm reading sometimes. Because, like, sometimes the pages don't even... There's no cohesiveness. So, it's really hard to, like, want to follow along. It's not that it's hard to follow along. It's hard to want to pay attention and want to follow along. I find myself, like, skipping pages as I'm reading or skipping paragraphs as I'm reading. Because I'm just like, what the fuck? Um, I don't really know where the story is going. She's like, she's like, has this boyfriend. She's really fucking mean to him. She's obsessed with this guy who doesn't want her and tells her like, I don't want you. We'll never really be together. But she's like delusional as fuck. And she's like reading through the lines. And like, she thinks it's going to be something that it's really not. And then the woman she wants to be breaks up with her boyfriend that's where I'm at right now. Like, she just broke up with her boyfriend. And she also, like, got into the argument with the man she wants to be with. So she's, like, watching them through social media and, like, laughing at the fact that they're, like, not talking together because it makes her feel like, oh, like, I finally have a chance. Like, he's finally gonna want me and talk to me. But I don't know. Uh, this book is really, really hard to finish. I'm not gonna lie. It's been so hard to get through. And I was trying to finish it, like, by the time I was started filming this. But it's just really, really hard, and I'm just kind of over it. I'll, I'll force myself to read it just because I have it in my hands. But I'm, I'm going to hope to try to finish it after I film this, just so I can return it and not have it in my face anymore. Um, I requested another book. It's called We Do What We Do. I think, yeah, I think it's called We Do What We Do, or We Do What We Want When We, something like that. I don't know. But it's another, like, lesbian, like, will they, won't they, like, in the dark and secret type of thing. I'm learning that I like those type of books. I think because I see myself in those books in a way. Like, with Big... Oh, I keep talking about Big Swiss, but I really, really liked it. I think I like it because I see myself in Greta, but I also see myself in Flavia. So it's, like, 
having both of their characters is like I don't know I I relate to both of them in a way so I think that's also why I like it a lot more <sighs> but yeah guys those are my books I recommend Big Swiss I kind of recommend Milk Fed but I don't recommend I'm a fan I thought it was gonna be really good because like just looking at it the cover is really fun there's fun colors like I read like a synopsis I just thought it was gonna be a lot more different I thought it was just gonna be like you know, a beginning to end type of book. And it's, it's just not, there's really no, you, you never really know what direction the book is going in and not in a fun way. It's just like a, what the fuck am I reading? What is the point of reading this type of way? So yeah, those are my, my book of the weeks. I've been reading these books. I read all these books. Yeah. Within the last week. Um, I'll probably start adding you know little book um recommendations or book summaries to the episodes as i continue to read um but yeah that's really all i've been doing all i've been going through i don't know it's summer and i'm so excited the weather's finally nice I'm sick of the cold. I'm sick of the rain. I'm ready for sun. I'm ready to be tan. I'm ready to be outside. Oh my God, we surprised Allie with a North Coast ticket. Her birthday's not until Friday, but I'm recording this on Wednesday and we just got too excited. So we gave her the ticket on Monday. And yeah, so we're going to be outside and I'm just ready to be outside. It's summer. Let's be amazing. My monthly affirmation is bloom into your best let's all bloom into our best this month this summer this year let's be great yeah that's really all i have for you guys so yeah go ahead like comment subscribe share with your few your besties i will be coming and going as i please and i will see you hopefully very soon on another episode of diving deep with me guys bye guys